All right, my friends, welcome. It is that time. Like I said, today we are starting our first manufacturing project where we are going to design and then build something, and this is yes for a grade. With this, we've got two main components. We've got the 3D modeling component, which is why we're in Inventor. And then after we 3D model all of our parts, we are going to go ahead and build them. Now today, as we do our 3D modeling, we're actually gonna make about four different files, and then we will show you how to put them all together. So the very first step is we wanna open up a new part. Now, if your screen looks like this, you can click on this button right here, or you can go to new and select standard IPT. In our part, what I want us to do before we start building anything is go ahead and change our units. So we want to be working in millimeters for this. So just like we did for our dice tutorial, we're going to go to tools and document settings, units, and then change our length to millimeters. Click apply and then close and then come right on back to our 3D model page. We're going to go ahead and we're going to start our first sketch. And our first sketch, we're gonna do it on the XY plane. So you can see in bright green right here, it says XY plane, that is the one that we want. So I'll start my sketch, and here we go. The first tool that I'm gonna use lives in the same cluster as our rectangle tool. Now, in case you didn't know this, all of these tools have little drop downs, so they have many more options underneath them. Along with our two-point rectangle, which is the first one we probably used, we also have three-point rectangles, center-point rectangles, and slots. So we're going to be using this center-to-center -center slot, and you can see as I hover over it, it gives us some instructions on how to use it. So it's going to have us first pick a starting point, then pick a length. And then it's going to have us pick a width, which is going to create the diameter of the slot. So I'm going to go ahead, grab my tool, and for my starting point, I'm just going to click our origin, so our 0, 0, and you can see as I hover over it, the little dot under my mouse is green. I'm going to click here and let go of my mouse button. I'm not holding down the mouse button, but it's still following me. And I'm going to type in my dimensions. My first dimension for my length is going to be 50. So 5, 0, and we hit the Enter key. So it went ahead and it made our first line, and then it gave us the option to do another measurement. That is going to be our thickness of our slot. For this one, we're gonna type in 20 and hit enter. So now we've got this shape that is curved on both ends and connected with straight lines. So that is exactly what we want. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my circle tool and I'm going to make two circles. One of them is going to have its center point in the origin, so our zero, zero position. And again, I click and let go, and as I move my mouse, the shape follows me. The diameter of this circle is going to be 12.7 millimeters, so I'll type in 12.7 and hit enter. And I'll do that same thing over here. Now you can see as I hover over this center line, at some point my mouse snaps to a point and it turns green. That is the center of that circle. So this is gonna be my next center point. And I'm gonna go ahead, type the same number, 12.7, hit enter. Once we've got our two circles and our slot, I'm going to finish my sketch. And then I'm gonna go ahead and extrude it. As I am extruding, I'm going to hover my mouse over my shape, and you can see how part of this shape is turning this like light greenish color. If I move my mouse over top the circle, that circle is now selected that light green. This is selecting the profiles that we are going to extrude. So we're going to extrude the main part, and we're going to extrude it for a distance of 6.35 millimeters. We're going to hit OK, and once we have extruded it, we are actually done with this part. So we're going to go ahead and click File, and we are going to click Save. Now when we save it, like we've said before, it is very important that you go to your drop-down menu, you go to this PC, and you find your drive here. When you save it, I want us to get in the habit of saving our parts with descriptive names. So we're going to include our name as well. 
I'm going to call this one Marshall, because that's my last name, underscore base. This is the base piece of our project, so this is a really solid name. You can name it whatever you want, but please be careful. If you were to name it Marshall.base, you are going to confuse the computer. Anytime you use a period when naming a file, it thinks that whatever comes after the period is the file extension, like PDF or IPT. So if you name it your last name dot something, you might corrupt your file, but underscores are safe. So I would recommend doing your name underscore base and then saving that part. As we continue, we're going to go ahead and we are going to start a second part. So I'm going to come up here to the file button on my screen and I am going to make a new part. So I just hovered over that new button. It gave me these options and select new part. Same thing that we did last time. The very first thing I'm going to do is go to my tools and document settings, change my units to millimeters, apply and close. And now as we get started on this, we're going to go ahead and start our 3D sketch or our 2D sketch, sorry, similarly on the XY plane. Now this sketch has got a lot of measurements as well as a new tool. So I'm going to go slowly, but also remember that you can come back, rewind and rewatch this part. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change the format of a line. So over here, we've got some format options, and I'm going to click on this line right here, which is if I hover over it, is called a center line. I'm going to draw one center line, so I click on that, it's now highlighted, and then I'll click on my line tool. My center line is going to go at my origin point, so starting there, and it's going to go straight up for 15 millimeters. Now you can see that that line is structured a little bit differently. It's got a long dash and then a short dash and then a long dash and then a short dash, and that is what we want. So this is not a final piece of geometry, but it is something that we will use later to help us create the final shape of our piece. Now for the rest of them, we're gonna do regular lines. So I've unclicked or deselected that center line so it's no longer highlighted, and I can go ahead and grab my line tool again. I will again start by clicking on the origin point, and this time I'm gonna come straight up for four millimeters. So type four, hit enter. Now when I hit enter, I still have my line tool selected, so I don't need to pick a new start point, I just need to move my mouse and type new dimensions. So I went four millimeters straight up. I'm now gonna go 1.65 millimeters to the right. So type 1.65, hit enter. Going to move my mouse up a little bit. We're going to go up again for 11 millimeters. That should match us with the top of that center line that we drew. So we should now be at a total height of 15. I'm going to come to the right again and I'm going to move my mouse a little bit, type 3.35. And then I'll move my mouse down, make sure that it's at a 90 degree straight down angle and I'm going to type 3.2. Moving it out to the right, typing 1.35. Moving it down, typing 6.35. One more time, I'm going to go to the right. I'm going out to the right for 3.65. And now here's where we get to do something kind of funky. I'm gonna move my mouse and I'm going to extend my line so that it is way down here underneath my zero line. And rather than typing in a length, I'm going to be typing in an angle. So you can see how I have two boxes. One of them says 7.731 millimeters, that's my length. The other box, which is just over there on the left, says currently 57.61 DEG. That's my degrees. If I hit the tab key on my keyboard, you can see how the other measurement is now highlighted. So currently my degrees are highlighted. And if I hit the tab key again, it switches back and forth between the two. So rather than worrying about length for this one, I'm going to specifically make the angle 
70 degrees. So I'll type in 70, I'll hit enter. Now this line is a little bit long, that's okay. At this point, I'm going to hit my escape key on my keyboard so that I no longer have my line tool selected because I don't want it to be connected to this end anymore. I am gonna grab my line tool and go back to my origin point. And I'll just come straight out to the right until those two points connect. There should be a point where your line kind of snaps to that intersection and you might need to zoom in to really find it, but I'm going to bring my line straight out to that intersection. It should be about 8.016. Once I've done that, I can hit the escape key to deselect my line tool and I'm going to come up here to the modify section and grab the trim tool. It's the one that looks like a little pair of scissors. With the trim tool, since I made this line go a little long, I do want to cut it off. So I can hover over and you can see how this section of the line is now light green and dotted. So that is the portion that is going to get trimmed away. When I click, it deletes itself and now it is just that solid shape. In order to use the trim tool, you do have to have um, a section that extends past an intersection. So like if I were to trim this right here, it's going to try and trim it at the dimension. Uh, whereas this, it's just going to try and trim pretty much the whole thing. Once we have this shape with all of those measurements, we are going to go ahead and finish our sketch. Now this is where we get to use yet another new tool as we make this into a 3D object. Rather than extruding this, we are going to revolve it. When I click on revolve, since that is the only surface, it automatically selected and revolved it around that center line axis. So it did it automatically. But if you had to select it, what we would do is we would go ahead and click on that surface where it says profile, where it says axis, we would click on that axis and then we would go ahead and click okay. Now I do want this to rotate for a full 360 degrees, but if I only wanted it to go 90 degrees, so a quarter turn, I could do that as well. So full circle, 360 degrees, we click okay. And this y'all is our second part. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and file save it. I would name this one last name underscore peg. Our third part, go ahead and open yet another new file. Here in our third part, our third file, we're going to go ahead and you guessed it, change our units. So tools, document settings, units, millimeters, apply and close, and then we'll start our 2D sketch. Again, still working on that XY plane, so go ahead and click on that one. And we are going to start off with our circle tool. Go ahead and click in the origin. And our first circle is going to have a diameter of 10 millimeters. So type 10, hit enter. We're going to do a second circle with the same center point. So go ahead and click in that origin again. This one's going to have a diameter of 28 millimeters. Now once we've got these two circles, I'm going to finish my sketch and I'm going to extrude. And the thickness or distance here is going to be 3.175. Click OK. Now, as I hover over this circle, this is where I'm going to start my next sketch. So I can either double click or right click and start new sketch. When I'm on this, I'm actually going to move my circle a little bit and grab a line. And I'm going to draw a line from my origin point. And we're going to go up for 18 millimeters. I can now zoom in on just the top of that line because we're going to draw a little tooth for a gear. So the teeth are the parts of the gears that uh, mesh together and fit inside of each other and they allow the gear to turn. So we are going to go to the right for 0.915 millimeters and again make sure that that is at 90 degrees. And then we are going to bring our mouse all the way down so that it's chilling inside the circle. And for this one, rather than worrying about length, we are going to go for the specific angle. So hit the tab key and type 105. When you hit enter, it should look something kind of like this. 
Now we can go ahead and grab that trim tool and just like we did on the last part, we're going to trim that excess bit where it overlaps our circle. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Now you could very well grab the line tool and type out those measurements again, or we can use our mirror tool. So our mirror tool is going to allow us to select some geometry and copy it across a mirror axis. So I'm gonna click on that tool. It's gonna to ask me to select my lines. So I'm gonna grab these two. And then I do have to switch, click on the mirror line selector. And I'm gonna click on that line that we did straight up. When I click apply, it's going to go ahead, grab that geometry, copy it and flip it so that it's right on the other side. Once I've got that done, I'll finish my sketch and once again, we'll go ahead and extrude. Now with this, I can zoom in and I am gonna have to select both faces. They're gonna go back and they're gonna be the same thickness as the rest of the gear. I'm gonna click OK and now it should look kind of like this. Now with our gear, since we want those teeth to mix together, um, we are going to fillet the edges so that they're rounded and they can kind of slide into one another a little bit more easily. So I'm going to grab this fillet tool and like we saw in our dice tutorial, it's going to round the edges. Now if I just start selecting edges, you can see with the current radius that is selected that that is a pretty aggressive angle. So I'm going to change this radius to 0.75. And I'm going to make sure that I have four edges selected. So it should be the top two edges and the two edges where that gear tooth comes in contact with the circle. If you need to, you can change your point of view just by clicking in the top corners of our cube up top here, our navigation cube, so that you can click on all of the corners that you need to. Once we've got those four edges, go ahead and click OK. And now we get to do something really, really cool. We're gonna go ahead and we are going to copy this tooth around our whole gear. So we're going to use this circular pattern tool. So underneath the pattern section, it looks like a circle. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna select the features. With the features, we can either select them here on the left side menu where it has all of our layers, or we can click on them on the actual part itself. I like clicking on the left side menu because that way I can make sure I get both the extrusion and the fillet because I want to copy the teeth, but I want all of the teeth to have those rounded corners. Then I go ahead and select my rotation axis and I'm going to select this inside corner, or this inside, sorry, surface of my gear. And you can see as soon as I select that, it starts to project my gear teeth around. Now we want a total of 16 of these gear teeth. So where it says placement, we're gonna type 16. And they are going all 360 degrees around. When I click OK, it will actually make those teeth. And now we have our full first gear. Look at that. And again, go ahead and save your work. We're gonna name this one last name underscore gear one. For our very last part, we're going to go ahead, open file, new part, and you guessed it, change those units. And we're going to be making a second gear that is a little bit bigger than the first one. So we're going to follow incredibly similar steps. We're going to start that 2D sketch on the XY plane. And we're going to go ahead and draw two circles. The first one has that same diameter of 10 millimeters. The second one's going to be much larger, though, with a diameter of 64.4. So pretty gosh darn big. Uh, now, one super useful tool as we start to work with things of really different sizes, over here on our navigation menu, this page with an eyeglass is our zoom all tool. So what it does when you click on it is it zooms you in or out appropriately so that everything that you've drawn so far is in your frame. Super useful. Once we've got those two circles, we're going to go ahead and extrude that to a thickness of 3.175, same as our last gear. Click OK. And then just like the last gear, we're going to right click on the face and start a new sketch. From here, I'm going to grab the line tool. 
start at my origin point and I'm going to go straight up this time for 36 millimeters. So type 36, hit enter. And now I can zoom in and focus on just this top portion. And just like the last time, we're gonna make our gear teeth. We're gonna to go to the right for one millimeter. So type one, hit enter. And then as we move our mouse, again, we're focusing more on the degrees than the length here. So rather than typing in a length in millimeters, hit the tab key and type 110 degrees. Hit enter. We'll grab that trim tool, trim off the excess, and then grab our mirror tool, and we will mirror those two lines across that center line that we made and apply. Once that sketch is done, we can go ahead and extrude it. Again, zooming in if we have to, to make sure we're selecting the faces. Clicking on both of them, making sure that they go the same direction as the rest of our gear for the same thickness, 3.175, and okay. Now we are at the step where we get to fillet and round the edges. So using that fillet tool, I'm gonna select all four of these edges. And just like last time, I'm gonna change the radius, but this new radius is going to be one millimeter. And click okay. And our very last step is going to be to do that circular pattern. So grabbing that tool and over here on the left side menu, clicking on my features, so both my extrusion and my fillet, I'm gonna click on the rotation axis and grab the inside of my circle and I'm making a lot of teeth on this one. In fact, I'm gonna make 32. That should bring us all the way around. We click okay, and now we have our very own gear. We're gonna stop this video here as soon as you save your file. And in the next video, we're gonna show you how to put all of them together in what's called an assembly. Name this gear Marshall Gear 2, and please, for the love of God, go give yourself a break.